All right. Hey, welcome to the podcast. I'm Joel here with Dad. And I'm Rick. What are we going to talk about today, Joel? What you got on mind? I was talking to a guy the other day, and he's a prominent Christian, you know, He's training the next generation of leaders. Ah, and the more I talk to this dude, I'm like, this cat <laughs> has no self-awareness. Uh-huh. And I mean, I was asking him about personality stuff and and he, he drove me crazy because I hate Christian answers like this one. I said, you know, like, what's your personality? He's like, well, look, I don't really like to study personality because I've found that I'm at my best when Jesus is at the center of everything I do. And I'm like, wow. Well, I agree, but how often does that happen? You know, and I was, I don't like people who have, I'm, yeah, I don't like them. I know I have to love them. <laughs> but people who have no self-awareness or who give me the Jesus answer all the time, because that's just... Now, look, the Jesus answer is true, but there's these elements of like, how does that apply in your life? And people that... I, I It drives me insane. I, something Thomas Akempis said, he said, a humble knowledge of yourself is a surer way to God than a deep search after learning. And I realize people think, oh, it's self-centered to be thinking about myself. But God made you to be a unique expression of him on this earth. If you're not aware of that and what you bring to the table, you're not going to actually bring a lot of value to the world. And yeah, you can preach the gospel and make him at the center of it. But come on, man. Like people, Sometimes pastors are like... Well, I preach, we just preach from the whole council of God here. And I'm, I get what they're meaning, but I'm like, you can't even figure out your wife. How do you know the whole council of God? It's in the Bible, but you can't even figure out your wife. How are you figuring out the whole Bible? Have some humility, man. And I yeah. just, the, the element of like this connection between humility and self-awareness, I just think, can you truly follow Christ and, and have no self-awareness? Well, I guess, you know, more definition of self-awareness because what you're distinguishing between self-focus and self-awareness. Right. Self-focus. I mean, it takes some self-focus to get self-aware. you got to be looking at, thinking about. But I guess if you're looking at it like, okay, a uh, guy too, we were looking at doing some kind of a personality test. He goes, well, I don't like to be put in a box. And I'm thinking, you're already in a box. You're just Talking about to... self-focus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. I just wanted to say, you're already in a box. All we're trying to do is figure out which box you're in. It's got nothing to do with, am I, you know, don't pigeonhole me. You're already in a pigeonhole. You're already either this way or that way. And that, I mean, that is the ultimate self-focus. Don't label me. I'm too great to be labeled. Yeah. Or too unaware to be labeled. That's yeah. That's what it is. So I think the, the self-focus to where we can figure out what gifts and talents has God deposited into me. Because, and you know what? I think one of the best ways to figure those out is by trying something. Trying something you think you might like, and if you fall flat on your face, you go, whoop, that wasn't it. Let's try this one. Yeah. You know, I, because again, I'm not sure that by just sitting around and meditating and humming and whatever, you know, um, that I'm ever going to really discover who I am. I mean, there are tests you can take and there's things you can take here, but even most of those tests are self what do you say, self-diagnosis, where you're the one answering, I like this, I like that. Well, how do you know if you've never done that? I'm yeah. good at this, I'm good at that. You don't know unless you've ever done that. So well, that's discovery. And that's a huge element of self-awareness too. That's one of the things, the problems I have with the Enneagram. I love the Enneagram. It serves a very important purpose, I think. Uh, but here's the problem with the Enneagram. It requires a level of self-awareness that if you don't have that, you can't even properly self-diagnose. There's this guy that I know, yeah. he's a, an Enneagram coach. As you watch him, as you listen to what he says, as you listen to what you write about, he is a classic Enneagram 3. Now, Enneagram 3s are some traits about themselves they don't like. So he tells everyone he's in Enneagram 7. And I'm like, you're a coach, and you literally fit the textbook of an Enneagram 3, but he's telling everybody he's in Enneagram 7. I'm like, talk about no self-awareness. So yeah. there's this element of certain tests you can't even until you have some self-awareness. But yeah. I think that requires humility. Saying, well, yeah, there's some negative sides. And I also think that self-awareness requires willingness to listen to other people's take on who you are. You can't figure out who you are apart from community. This is a huge thing. Is a lot of people are like, oh, I'm just, you know, it's me and myself and I just realize who I am and what I'm, what I'm really good at and what I'm, you know, I'm an empath. I'm just an empathic person. No, actually you're a p- pathetic person. It's Maybe you're not an empath. Maybe you're just a pathetic person who is really weak, right? You can't figure out who you are apart from other people around you speaking into your life and saying, "When I see you, I see this. I don't see this. You see that about yourself. Why would you? Uh, why do you? Why do you see that about yourself when I I don't see that about yourself?" That's a that's a good point, and that's a that's that's worth writing down. You know that you can't really find out who you are outside of community. 
because again, we do, and that's, I guess, one of the reasons that Jesus, you know, I mean, there's really no such thing as isolated Christianity. It's always in community. In fact, many of the passages, you know, where it says, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, that you is not, I am the temple. It's a plural, you, Mm -hmm. we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And many times we're a very individualistic society. And so we tend to think it's me, myself, rather than most of it's, you know, he didn't say start the Lord's Prayer, my Father who art in heaven. It's our Father. Yeah. It's a corporate thing. There's this, we are together in this, and we are a body. We are not a finger. We are not a part of the body. We are the body all together. So, yeah, that's good. Good. Yeah, I, and I, I don't think you can figure out who you are apart from community and other people speaking into your life also because we're all too close to ourselves. Mm-hmm. You've you got your blind spots. You're so familiar with that. I know, like with Emily, uh, I think she's just now realizing what a gift she has for hospitality. She just w- makes people feel welcome, but she doesn't see it because she thinks everybody's got it. Yeah. But I'm like, no, not everybody has that. You just, you like, it flows out of you. You emanate hospitality. I have to work at that. And even when I do it, I'm clunky and awkward at it. Um, I've yeah. learned a lot from her, but you don't even realize sometimes the gifts that are in you because you're too close to them. And that's where community helps us figure out really who we are and what we're gifted at. And you can't figure that out on your own. Yeah. So, the, so the positive traits we have come so naturally, we just figure, well, everybody's that way, you know, and the negative traits like this friend of yours, who's the coach, we <laughs> tend to justify, or we tend to say, well, that's not really what it is. Or we just, you know, ignore it, can't even see it, blind spot it. Yeah, it's right there, but you look over your shoulder and you can't even see it. But everybody else can. Yeah. Well, and that's the other problem with self awareness is, man, you can get a whole lot done with lack of self awareness because you're not worried about how you're impacting anybody around you. But you're always impacting everybody around you. If you're a father, if you're a daughter, if you're a child, your behavior (laughs) is impacting, and you may not be aware of how it's impacting others, but others are. And that's where I think one of the most important things we can do, and the most humble things we can do, is say on a regular basis hey, what do you see right now in me that's holding me back from becoming all I could be? Yeah, yeah, And again, it's wound from, wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. You know you've got a real friend on your hands when they're willing to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Yeah, and yeah. But that's hard because, but a lot of times we don't even, I mean, when you have lack of self-awareness, especially, oh, the worst kind of self-awareness <laughs> is when it's couched in spirituality. Well, I'm just at my best when Jesus is at the center of what I do. And how often is Jesus really at the center of what you do, you goober? Like, <laughs> come on, uh, have some humility. Yeah how, uh, yeah, how often is he really at the center of what you do? And if you say it's quite often, then maybe, uh, yeah, so, okay, I get that. This is really good because, as you notice, I'm, <laughs> as you have pointed out a number of times, self-awareness is not my most positive trait. I, uh, yeah. I'm working on it a little bit, but... Uh, I tend to be more outwardly focused than even being aware of what's going on around me too much, you know? Yeah. I live in a, I live in a fog. Onward through the fog. My happy place is a foggy place. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think of something, uh, Bert, Bertrand Russell, he said this, the fundamental cause of the trouble is that in the modern world, the stupid people are cocksure while the intelligent are full of doubt. <laughs> so there is That's this good. element too, but here's the other, this is the challenge I face is... Now we're quoting Bertrand Russell. <laughs> Okay. Is that a problem? Uh, no, I suppose not. <laughs> okay. yeah. That's, I hey, like if that it's quote. true, it's if it's quote. true, yeah, if that <laughs> shoe fits, be aware of it. Uh, that's the other problem, though, is too much self-awareness can be debilitating. We're like, I'm always, like, I'm, doing yeah. these, I'm doing these Ecclesiastes videos, uh, and after I do, I'm trying to cram it into one minute, you know, yeah. a profound truth into one minute. And afterwards, I, I, I get up, and I'm like, oh, I should have qualified this, and yeah, that, but that's not always true, because right. sometimes it's this, and... Yeah, you should do this, but sometimes there's other, you know, ex- extenuating circumstances and fact. And I'm like, I can't think about it too much, and because yeah. I overthink it. And so sometimes too much self awareness, too much awareness in general, can actually be debilitating. So there's this balance of finding, and maybe that's where the humility comes in too. Going, yeah, I'm not going to be the, I am not going to be Solomon in one minute. Yeah. Who do you think you are, Joel? Yeah. Uh, but then what's really irritating is the people with lack of self-awareness, they'll just pull forward and, you know, they build these, I think it's narcissism is a massive lack of self-awareness. It's sure. blocking out anything but yourself. And when you have that, uh, you, you, can, you can blow through anything. And, you know, you think everybody's really loving what's going on here, but that's because you're not even paying attention to how you're impacting yeah. others. 
Well, that's interesting because that's kind of, you, you know, the very nature of narcissism you would think would be self-awareness, but it's not, it's self-focus. And again, mm. that, that's what a picture of what we were talking about, the difference between self-focus and self-awareness. So self-awareness kind of has as much to do with your impact on what's going on around you, whereas self-focus is just me focusing on me. Self-awareness, you're saying sort of, I think you're saying, kind of has an impact on I'm aware of what I'm doing to others around me as well. Yeah, and and not only on the negative, but on the positive. What do I bring to the table? Yeah. Because a lot of times people, I don't, you know, it's that, it's false humility. Oh, I don't bring anything to the table. I'm like, actually, what you bring to the table is exactly what your community is lacking. God put you in this community for a reason. You yeah. bring something to the table. You need to be using that. And to, you know, humility is not thinking le less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less, which again goes back to the diff the subtle difference between self-focus and self-awareness. And man, you can get wrapped up. I, I think this a lot of times when people come to a certain level of self-awareness, it can be kind of addictive where you meet people that kind of get stuck in that phase of reading one more self-help book, finding out one more personality trait about themselves. And it's oh, like, yeah. oh yeah, I am a, like that. I am an empath. I'm, a, oh, I'm an yeah. empath. That's just the reason I do this because I'm an empath. And it's like, get over yourself. Just, yeah. you can get so caught up in labeling yourself that yeah. it becomes self-focus, which is where that subtle line is. There's a self-awareness of recognizing who you are, what you bring to the table, what you might bring in a negative sense to those around you. But it's also not letting it debilitate you uh, to the point where you, you can't do anything, but also not where you ignore everyone around you because you're so focused on making yourself a better person. Yeah. So, the, I mean, there may not be a definitive line where it goes from positive to negative, but if it was, maybe it's, if there is such a line, maybe it's what the purpose is. Is the purpose for me understanding more about myself so that I can then serve others? Or is the purpose for me understanding more about myself so I know more about myself and yeah. I understand myself better? So if it's in that of serving others, coming to know what gifts I have, what talents I have. And again, as Paul said, what do you have that wasn't given you? Mm -hmm. We've got nothing, anything that's in me. So really, in a sense, it's kind of a going on a search for what God has deposited within you. Strengths as well as weaknesses. And you know, it's interesting because Paul didn't say, I stopped boasting, he said, I boast in my weaknesses, mm. not in my strengths and my weaknesses. So I found, hey, this is an area where if anything good's going to happen, it's got to be because God's going to work through me in it. Right. What? And that, that's where this weird paradox, I don't think it's yes and no, I think it's yes and. I think God uses those weaknesses, but oftentimes our weakness, uh, he uses us in our weakness, but there's some strength he put within us that is going to actually bring to the table using that weakness in a great way. Yeah. And that, again, that's so like, whoa, that's, it's not black and white. It's yes and. <laughs> well, and. And often they're the same thing. Your greatest strength is, is your greatest weakness. Right, I know it right. sounds kind of Zen-ish, you know, woo, -woo you know. It, it is true. But it is true, yeah, yeah. Your greatest strength is also the area where you have the greatest challenge or yeah, possibility I think, of fall. I think that's one of the things like with you is you, you just feel like everybody should get a shot. Yeah. And you give them a shot and sometimes they're horrible at what they're doing, but you are so <laughs> optimistic and positive that, Sometimes they're like, wow, this guy actually believes in me. And so they go and do it and they arrive at places that they never could have thought they could get because you were just naive enough to think they could do it, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe they're so bad, I think they got to get better. They couldn't get worse. Right. So it's your optimism. Your optimism <laughs> gives them a shot um, and people rise to the occasion. Sometimes they don't, but sometimes yeah. they do. And you just go... I mean, that's one of your favorite things that uh, Warren used to say all the time. If it's a rooster, it'll crow. So give it a shot and we'll see, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Everybody so, deserves a chance to fail. <laughs> yeah. So I think, I mean, I think that's a, I think you nailed it though. It's what's the focus of the self-awareness? The purpose. What's the goal? What are you trying to achieve when you're trying to, is it, is it so I can learn more about myself or is it so I can use the gifts God's given me to be a blessing to others? Thanks for listening. Please consider sharing this with your friends on the platform of your choice. For more from Joel Malm, visit joelmalm.com. For more from Rick Malm, visit rickmalm.com. Our podcast music was produced by Alex Burleson.